Good morning, welcome Thursday 19th of October 2023. This is our morning movement snack. So if you go to my live, welcome, welcome, welcome. I think it will be a little bit light. It is early, it's 6.45 in the morning. Um, Work-wise, work demands, off I go. So, I'm just going to have a sip of my cup of tea if that's all right. Wait and see if anybody joins us. I had a few people um, over the week. So people are up and around. I wouldn't be if I had the choice. <laughs> I'd still be just about getting out of bed now, I think, probably. Um, but this is our morning movement snack. So it's the first one of the day. It's about mobilisation. It's about getting the body ready for the day ahead. So as you know, we have three snacks a day. We start with mobilisation. We look at strength and balance. And then we have some three-dimensional movement and some stretching to finish off later on in the day. So by the end of the day, you should have done about 30 to 45 minutes of um, extra movement that you may not have done otherwise. And that's what it's all about. It's all about that extra movement that we do. Some additional movement minutes to add into our day. Started back in 2020, uh, in March, March 23rd, 2020 we started. Um, at the start of lockdown, and supposed to only last about 30 days. Um, and we're coming up to... Uh, well, we won't be that far off our fourth birthday. We've been doing it for four years. Started off with Bex, who uh, who was awarded uh, given an award by the uh, British Geriatric Society recently in honour uh, for the, for her work and her commitment to uh, exercise, and movement, and and, and that uh, fitness area as far as older adults are concerned. But also mentioned the within there. The work that she did as far as uh, be, uh, make moving wishes because it was just Bex to start off with. 30 days of Bex, three times a day, and it grew and grew and grew. And over the time, over that 30 days, it became very, very clear that a lot of people wanted it, so it carried on past 30 days. And then myself came on, and Kelsey came on shortly after that as well to help out because it, it, it would have been too much for Bex to do on, a, on an ongoing basis. Since then, it's mainly Bex and Kelsey that do the bulk of the work um, because my time scales don't allow me to do a, a noon and a, a four o'clock unless it's at the weekend. But mornings I can do all the time. And that's why I'm here with you early. That's what I'm just rambling to get to. Anyway, we are hitting air at 6.45, I think. So we'll get ourselves going and get ourselves ready to face the rest of the day. So I'm going to lose um, the, the comments where they would come up at the bottom of the screen and we'll get ourselves going with the wish, wish, bing. Good morning, everybody. Welcome along. It is Thursday. It's the 19th of October 2023. This is your morning movement snack. Normally, it would be at 8 a.m., 6.45 for you today, okay? As always, we can do it in standing or seated. You need some fixed external support in standing, seated, a strong, sturdy chair. On a carpet floor, you could have socks or bare feet. I've got my trainers on so I can rush out the door as soon as I'm finished. Um, but on a hard floor, you would definitely need sensible, comfortable foot. Right, let's have a look at our posture. In seated, we're going to bring ourselves away from the back of the chair and into this front third of the chair, which we call our working area. And then we line everything up. So heels in line with knees, knees in line with hips. In seated, your knees are bent already. In standing, soften them a little. So we don't bend them, so we're not squatting down, but we're just softening them a little. Lift and separate to get this extra bit of space between your ribs and your hips, and bring your shoulders up, back, and press them down, lengthening through the neck. From there, we can start with a heel raise getting some movement happening into the body. We start down with the feet, just lifting them off, but it's about making the movements bigger. We don't increase the speed, we just keep them flowing, we keep them continuous and regular, and we increase that range of movement. So we make it a bigger movement to increase the intensity. Now in seated, you've already got your hip flexors at 90 degrees, and now you're asking them to do more. So if you get any discomfort into here, it's back into that heel raise, yeah? Let's bring your arm in. And if standing, if we're using support, our hand is on that support. It could be at the front, it could be to the side. And in seated and in standing, if you're not using support, you can just change hands as you want to. But if you are using support, it's important the hand comes down before the other hand comes off. Therefore, if your hand support is in front, you can change hands as many times as you want to. But if it's to the side, you might want to keep going a little bit longer on the one side. And then lose that arm, make the march a little bit smaller again. Take as many steps as you need to to turn into your support where you can put both hands on 
and then as you carry on turning, you can take the other hand off, and away you go. And then finally, in standing, if you're not using support in seated, you've got the opportunity to use both arms, both legs. Now we've got a lot more of the body moving, and that's helping to increase that intensity. What we're looking to do is get the blood pumping around the body, get those muscles warmed, get those joints warmed, and start to mobilise them as we move down from there into our actual mobilisation movements. And we've got three sections, top, middle and bottom. Now, two minutes, three minutes max of this um, boosting of circulation, and then we can start to bring it down. So let's make the arms a little bit smaller. Let's take those out, bring the legs a little bit smaller, bring it back into that heel raise, and then we can bring it into a pause. At this point, you might want to take a couple of deep breaths. And we're ready to move into our first set of mobilizations. We start with our head and shoulders. And here, let's think about how many times we move the head and how many times we move the arms in the day. Don't even probably think about it. But that's where we need to mobilize those joints, okay? So, base of support, heels in line with knees, knees in line with hips. Sit tall, stand tall, lengthen your neck, and lift your shoulders up towards your ears, and then press them back down past where they started. So we've got a lift, a straight up, and straight down. Trying to get the best possible range of motion. And we're looking at four or five of these. Now, once you've done your four or five, have a pause and let's rotate. So come forward, up, back past our rear lobe, shoulder blades together, and then press down, getting this cyclical motion happening. And again, it's four or five we're looking for, keeping that neck lengthened, trying to get the best possible range of motion. And once you've done your four or five, have a pause. And let's take it into our head turns. Now here, what we're trying to do is make sure the neck stays lengthened. The eyes stay level as we turn to the side. We pause in the centre and then we turn the other way. This little pause in the centre is the point at which we have a little breath and we allow the ears, the system in our ears, to stabilise itself again so we don't feel any dizziness or disorientation. But if you do, pop your hand down onto a bit of support. Now, so the key things here is the eye line staying level. So we're not looking up, we're not looking down. We're just turning to the side. Trying to get the best possible range, but no pain in that neck. And once you're only four or five each way, have a little pause and let's take it into the back of the neck. Now here, we're gonna stack the head back onto the shoulders again. So, eye line stays level once more. We might wanna use the fingers as a guide, but as a guide only, not a press. As we draw back, Guiding to make sure the eye line stays level, or as a guide to where we started, and therefore where we're going to finish. Four or five of these, stacking the head back onto the top of the spine, and if I take the fingers away, you don't see a great deal from the front, but from the side you could see that what I was doing was putting that head back onto the top. So rather than being here, and allowing us to come forward, we're just restacking to get that good alignment down through the, uh, the neck into the spine. Once you've done your four or five of those, have a pause, we're back into a circulation boost. It's a reboost this time, so 30 seconds only, and just the legs. Nothing else. So remember in seated you've got that option of those heel raises, or a march for 30 seconds. Enough to give the body a bit of a boost, because it's started to come down a little bit while we focused on that top section. And now we're going to move down into our middle section. And this is all about bends and twists and turns. So how many times do we reach down? We twist to get something, it might be a seat belt coming on putting your arm in a coat, those sorts of movements. How many times do we do it? We do it all the time. And I think we don't realise a lot of the time how much we use this trunk area until we've hurt our back, might have slept funny or something, and then all of a sudden, oh, almost every movement you do, you can feel it into your back. So mobilise it so we can get the best out of it as we go through the day. Now, as we come to the 30 seconds, bring this down into a pause, and we're going to reset that base. Seated-wise, think of your bottom as your feet. Take the, the feet out so they're shoulders width. Bottom wise, the bottom stays firmly on the chair as my feet stay firmly on the floor. And the first movement is down to the side, pause in the centre, and then the other way. You change hands every time if your hands are, if your sports in front. If it's to the side, we're just to the sport at the back. We do the four or five on that side, and then we change. In seated, as I say, really focus on that bottom staying firmly on that chair. So we're not lifting the buttock at all. We're keeping the buttocks firmly on that chair. So as we reach down, we're lengthening through the opposite side of our body. 
with strong movement down there. Trying to reach as far as you can, thinking about reaching to a lower shelf, reaching down to get something that might be on a table by the side of you. Those sorts of movements. Four or five each way. Now, once you've done your four or five, have a pause and let's take it into this rotation. So look at this in seated firstly. My bottom stays firmly on the chair, seated down there and not shifting the weight as I rotate to the side and come back into the centre and then the other way. It's about the hips staying still. So in seated, we need to really make sure those knees are soften. It's this turn here, back in. Again with your hands, change every time if it's in front, take them all to one side if it's on the side. Or use your support, pop your hips against it, pop your bottom against it. Now you're getting the same input as you are in a seated position. That's gonna tell you, because you'll feel the hips or the bottom lifting away from the support. That will tell you you've got movement in your hips. Two reasons we don't want it. One, because we're trying to focus into here. And two, because we don't want to put any misalignment down throughout that leg. Now, if you feel comfortable with that and you feel you've got a good movement, what you might want to do is put a little bit of a reach in there as well. So we add that extra bit of a twist. But again, still focus on those hips staying still. Four or five of those each way. And this is things like your seat belt. But it's also things like rolling over in bed. The trunk is involved in that movement. Once you're doing four or five, have a pause and we're into the back of the, the lower back. This is about extending the back. So, eye line stays level, knees stay soft, pelvis stays still this time as we lift the chest and then extend. Now, once more in standing, you might want to use your support to give you that input because in seated, again, I get that sensory input from my bottom and now the top part of my thighs as to whether I've got movement into the pelvis. If I have, I'm going to feel the weight shifting to the back as I lean back a little bit. And it's not a lean, it's a lift and an extend. So that lift is the very important part to start off with. Lift and that will start to lengthen it. And then if you just draw the shoulders back and the chest back a little way, it's going to give us that extension into the lower back. Four or five of those, getting the best range you can, keeping that RI level. And once you've done it, we're back into another reboost of our circulation upper body this time. Driving the elbows backwards, getting a big movement. You might want to make it a bit bigger so you get a bit of a twist in there. You've got this option to put a bit of canoeing in. That sort of movement, whatever feels comfortable for you, just to increase that intensity. One more time as we head down to our ankle, feet and toes. Now, standing, if that's not for you, then this is the point at which you need to look at, or you might want to look at a trunk movement again, or a head and shoulders movement again. Otherwise, we head down into our ankle, feet and toes as we bring this arm movement to a pause. <clears throat> All right, now this is about getting the best range of motion out of our ankles. And the ankles play such an important part in our stability. I would always advocate use support. Now all you've got to focus on is getting that best possible range of motion, not the balance part of it. Toe on the floor, lift and put the heel in the same place can be done without support. It's just another thing to think about. Toes on the floor, the, finger, the toes are pointing. As you bring it over, scrunch the toes and then splay them as you put the heel on the floor. But the foot goes into the same place, okay? It's not a seesaw motion. Once you've done four or five on one side, change to the other. Seated, you can do that same movement. Just give yourself some room with that leg so you can get into the right place to get that movement. Or come on back into your chair. Sit tall, extend one foot away, lift it off the floor slightly, point the toes away, and this is where you can scrunch them, bring the toes in towards the shin, and you can display them. So we get this motion here. Now, this isn't about strength, like that's not about balance. So, pop your foot down every time if you need to. Pop it down every couple of times, it's up to you. And certainly don't allow it to drift up. Keep it down close to the floor. It's an inch or a couple of inches at the most. Once you've done that, step back in, you can take a couple of steps forward as far as you are in seated and in standing we can actually do some walking through as well. So we can take these steps which are the start of our walk or the important part of our walk. So that heel stride rolling through and then coming onto the ball of the foot on the other side, ready to take that other step forward with that other leg and do that heel strike again. There you go, that is your morning movement snack. Have a great day, stay active, stay mobile, keep crowbarring. I'll see you tomorrow morning, 6.45, bright and breezy. Have a great day everybody. Toodles.